Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Ryan and welcome to this tutorial uh, on a speed infill. So this is my everyday infills. This is a client that's just walked in that didn't know I would be recording today. Um, this is how I do all of my infills. Uh, I've got a timer going and we're filming this in real time so that you can see exactly the process, exactly how long everything takes me. Um, I personally don't think I'm super fast, but when I speak to people in the industry that take an hour and a half and two hours uh, to, to achieve the same results, um, yeah, I just think I don't, I don't know what everybody does in that space of time. I don't feel like I'm taking shortcuts. Um, I have an amazing client base that come back regularly. Um, I don't cut any corners. I do everything as per um, you know, the education of the product that I use. Um, but I guess I just have such a process um, and I guess I go into autopilot and that's what makes me quite fast but hopefully these videos you can see what I do uh, maybe you'll see something that I do a little bit differently that might help improve your speed um, I also do run classes both here in Lithgow in New South Wales Australia um, and with minimum numbers met I can actually come out to you guys as well so if anybody wants to set up a class just um, pop something in the comments and we'll see if we can get some other techs around you to make up the numbers and I can head out your way. So what I'm doing uh, to start with is using my electric file and a carbide bin. All of the products that I'm using today are available from beautywell.com.au or your local distributor. I will drop some websites in the comments below so that you can find these products. So this is my carbide bin in my electric file. I am taking length down and I'm removing uh, just the existing top coat and product. So she already has a glitter fade on, which is what we're doing today, just a different color. So I'm just making sure I remove all of the glitter um, and the top coat. I'm not taking too much of the enhancement down because we don't have to want, we don't want to rebuild that enhancement. All we want to do is infill the cuticle area and lightly blend it out to what's there. If this was quite a long nail, we might need to rebalance the stress area. Um, but because of the length of these nails, there's not much to do in that respect. So that does save a little bit of time. Now my carbide bits, I like super sharp. I open a brand new one on the first of every month. It um, does add a little bit of expense, but the amount of time that I save by doing that justifies the cost. So there's a lot of things out there. I use a single file for each client as well and throw it out. Not only for hygiene, I like a super sharp file. I don't have to work as hard um, with a super sharp file and I get things done quicker. So time is money. So sometimes you just have to, it might cost you a little bit more, but the amount that you're saving in time definitely makes up for it. And I offer that to the client at the end of the service. They like to um, they like to take their file home or they like to see it be thrown out so they know it's not being used on anyone else. I also run a class on e-filing, exceptional e-filing. Um, that's just an intro class on how to work with your electric file, all about bits, um, how to sanitize them, um, and how to confidently use the e-file because unfortunately we do work in a very repetitive industry. We do have to look after our bodies, so the electric file can definitely help take some of the strain off our wrists and hands. Okay, so that time is just under four minutes there so far for our prep. The next bit that I'm going to use is a ceramic cuticle bit. You can also use a cuticle skiver. Um, I prefer this method over cuticle pushes and also over the natural, over a file on the natural nail I find I do far less damage. Um, you've got very minimal chance of cutting somebody with this bit and it does remove all of the non-living tissue and it gently puts, pushes back the cuticles. So this client, along with all of my clients, are regular clients that come in every three to six weeks for their infills. Uh, so their cuticles are usually in really good condition because I do this step every time. There's never um, sort of an over overgrowth of the non-living tissue on the nail plate. Now with the e-file I am right-handed. I'm always working from right to left with a really light touch. I'm also making sure this bit is kept parallel to the nail plate. 
I'm not holding it on, on an angle so it can dig into the nail plate. It's just very lightly touching the surface of the nail plate and uh, just removing the non-living tissue and gently pushing back those cuticles. All right, so now what are we on? About five and a half minutes it's taken for that prep work. Now I go in with a hand file and I just refine my nails. I didn't used to do this when I did acrylic nails. I used to um, go straight in with my acrylic application, but I do like to do this with gel nails because gels are generally uh, so perfect when they come out of the lamp, when they've been cured, that you don't need to do a lot of filing. So if you can get your shape and everything sorted initially, you'll find you've got less filing at the end. So all I'm doing is just making sure my free edge is shaped nicely and I'm blending the existing gel into the natural nail so we don't get any fill lines. We do need to make sure that uh, any lifting is removed and that's a time saver as well. If you don't have lifting to begin with, um, you're gonna save a lot of time not having to remove it. So that's probably my number one um, time saving tip is to make sure you know your product and you're applying it perfectly so that at your next infill you're going to be cutting down time because you're not removing any lifted product. Now this client is a typist, she's on a keyboard regularly and she does have a little spot of pocket lift uh, on the end of this nail so I am working to remove that. Uh, if I didn't remove it, it could either break or crack um, down the track or worst case scenario, she could get pseudonymous bacteria um, caught underneath there, a greenie, um, and develop an infection. So I am making sure that I totally remove all of the lifted products so there's nowhere for bacteria to hide. So just taking a bit of extra time on that middle finger. You can see now it's just about broken through into the lifted area and just filing all of that out. So we're exposing the natural nail and just blending the, the product into the natural nail so there's no ridges or lift for any germs or nasties to hide under and causes problems down the track. It takes a few extra seconds, but it ensures that the next infill, we're not having any extra problems. The files that I'm using are my favorite. These are from Beauty World. They're Australian made files. They're 100, 180 grit. So I like to use the 180 grit to uh, prep with, and then I use the 100 and, sorry. I use the 100 grit file to prep with, and I use the 180 to finish file at the end. The 180 is nice and smooth, so it doesn't leave us with any file marks or scratches on the nail. I'm using it with a really light touch as well. We don't want to dig into the natural nail at all. One of the good things about hard gels is they beautifully cocoon the natural nail and really um, protect the natural nail from um, chemicals. Um, because they are non-porous, nothing can actually penetrate. So they do a fantastic job of keeping the natural nail's integrity. So we don't want to compromise any of that by harsh filing. We're just under 10 minutes now. That's what's taken us for our prep. Um, what I like to do is to tell people to break down their times. <clears throat> so work out how long it takes you to prep a nail, work out how long it takes you to apply your product, and then how long it takes you to finish the nail. Um, once you have an idea of how long you take at each of these steps, you can work out which step takes the longest and why, and then you can work on improving, improving that. But definitely the number one key is your prep. And your prep is going to be nice and quick if your application from the previous infill is perfect. So I have some homework for you. Uh, if you just grab a notepad and keep it on your nail station and write down the headings uh, prep, application and finish filing and just make a note on each client how long it's taken you for each of those steps. Just being aware of the times you take will help speed you up. Um, so just record that for 10 or so clients and see if you can notice a pattern and hopefully those times will improve uh, from client to client. Okay, so that has taken us 10 minutes. 
just lightly brush off all of the dust and debris and my fabulous MD nail extraction table is sucking up that dust so it's not covering me it's not getting all over the floor or my client which is fantastic and now I'm using the light elegance cleanser to cleanse the nail plate making sure to get right up into the cuticle making sure there's no dust hiding anywhere in any of those grooves and now we're ready to put our prep products on my favorites are light elegance fighter prime fighter prime is an acid primer uh, so you do need to be very very sparing with it so I've just dipped into my bottle once and I'm applying a little dot to all 10 nails and now I'm onto my tack, my Light Elegance tack. This is a bonding agent, applied cuticle to free edge and cured in an LED lamp for 30 seconds or a UV for two minutes. This um, just provides a bonding agent for our gels to stick to. I love this combination. Uh, I find I have zero lifting issues, even on problem clients, with this combination of Vita Prime and tack. It's my, my favorite. Okay, so that one goes straight into the lamp for 30 seconds. Now the gel that I'm using today to infill with is Light Elegance Cover Pink One Step. This is a really thin viscosity gel. My client does have quite short nails. She doesn't need a lot of structure to them. It is more just an overlay. Uh, so this is a lovely thin gel for this application and I'm applying it with my number four oval bling brush. All right, so now on to application. I am an acrylic tech of the last 20 years, so I do tend to apply my gels using quite uh, an acrylic technique. So I do pick up a bead, place the majority of it at the cuticle area, uh, in the regrowth area, and then I'm just really lightly feathering the remainder of the product um, into the existing enhancement. So we don't want to add any thickness, uh, otherwise each time we infill the nail will get bulkier and bulkier we're just applying the majority of the product at the cuticle area and lightly blending it into the existing nail so this way we're saving um, product and we're also saving time now this is the nail that the pocket lift was on uh, so you'll see I'm just applying a slip layer quite thinly over the whole nail and then I am picking up some extra product uh, and just floating it over the area where we removed all of the product from just to build it back now if you have a look back at the ring finger you'll see that um, it's leveled really really nicely it's self leveled uh, that's a great thing about gels sometimes you can fuss around a little bit too much with them and by doing that you can whip bubbles in um, or sort of end up with a little bit of a mess the less is best which is awesome the less work the better um, so just really lightly float the product on, move on to the next nail, uh, and then if you do need to go back, you can. But most of the time, once you look back one or two nails, you realize that it's self-leveled beautifully and there's no work needed. Okay, now we're onto the second hand, the same method, just applying the gel at the cuticle and feathering it up into the rest of the nail. So you can see it's literally only taking a few seconds per nail for the application. Again, you can take a little bit more time to do this. Um, if you're learning, um, take a bit of time and get the application perfect and that means less filing later. But as you can see, once you've been doing it for a while, it is easy to really, really quickly put it on, let it self level, um, let the gel do the work for you. to the last one and then we're going to go into the lamp and cure for 30 seconds once this hand goes in the light the first hand will then be ready to work on so you're always doing something okay now this is the nail straight out of the lamp um, you can see that the product has self leveled nicely and there is minimal filing to be done we're under 15 minutes at this stage I'm just going to cleanse the inhibition layer off 
So we're ready to start filing. Because we have shaped our nail before applying the gel, um, I just really lightly go over the edges just to make sure there's no catches or no bits of gel sticking over. Now just really lightly with the 180 grit side of the file, blending it into the cuticle, just making sure it's really flush with the natural nail, making sure there's no dips or bumps. And that literally takes 20, 30 seconds per nail. On to the second one. I changed over a lot of clients initially to gels, um, my ones that didn't like filing. We've all got a few clients that just hate the feel of the file, they hate the electric file. So I put them in gels because it is minimal filing, they don't have to put up with that. You know, some people it just grates on their teeth, they just hate the feeling of the filing. So less is best. You can even use a buffer for this step um, or you can totally eliminate this step. If you get down to applying your product really, really well, you can do what we call a no, fill, uh, no file fill, which means we're skipping this step. You're applying your gel so perfectly and letting it self level. Once the hand comes out of the lamp, you're straight into your color application or your glitter application. So you're eliminating a whole step, um, which saves saves heaps of time and that's just a, a, an advanced technique just a little bit of practice and understanding your gels um, getting them to self level exactly where you want them to and you can cut out this step totally so while I'm filing this hand my second hand is in the lamp curing and by the time I finish this hand the second one is ready to come out and I can continue my finish filing on that hand you can see this is only taking about a minute and a half to file um, a whole hand which is awesome because nobody likes filing less filing the better save our bodies another good thing to work on um, and I also cover it in my um, classes in my exceptional e-filing classes is a filing schedule it is really important to have a filing schedule um, because basically then you can just go into autopilot and you know that all of your nails are going to be exactly the same um, so a filing schedule is just a method to file the nail you do the same method for each and every nail you take the same steps each time um, and I talk about that more in depth and I demonstrate my filing schedule um, in the exceptional e-filing workshop that I hold. So a lot of the speed just comes down to technique, organization, having everything out and organized and just repetitiveness. The more you do it the same way, the easier it becomes, the faster it becomes. You know, each infill, if you can shave off five or 10 minutes from each infill, you'll soon be down from an hour and a half to half an hour. So if you can cut your times from an hour and a half or even an hour to half an hour, you're doubling your income, which is fantastic. It's one of the major questions in the nail industry is how can I make more money? There's so many nail techs out there that don't seem to be making any money out of this. Um, so that's what one of my classes covers, the business of nails. It's all about the business side of things um, and how you can make money, how you can improve your speed, how you can improve everything about your business to turn it into an actual business. It's not a hobby, it's as fun as our job is. We get to play with glitter and you know, chat to all our friends while we're doing their nails. It is a business and it needs to be treated like that. So um, yeah, if you wanna get serious about your career, the business of nails is a really awesome workshop to look into. You can find details about all of the classes I run on my website, michelleryannailartist.com. I'll also pop that link in the comments below. Okay, so we're just about to hit 19 minutes and we have almost finished our finish filing. Alright, that's done. So we're going to brush off any excess dust. Then we're going to cleanse to make sure we've got a nice clean nail plate for the application of our glitter gel. I love the Light Elegance glitter gels because they're pre-mixed. Uh, you don't end up with dry glitter all over your top coat brush, which used to happen. Um, and they come in amazing colours and combinations, ready to go. You just take the lid off, ready to go. So this colour is called Glacier Blue. 
Um, it is a mix of chunky, fine and medium sized pieces of glitter. So when I do a glitter fade, I like to just put a, the bulk of the product on the tip of the nail. I do that on all five nails. Okay, this isn't going to be how it looks. This is just the bulk of the product. Once I get to the fifth nail, I'm going to clean my brush off just quickly, just to get the excess glitter. And then I'm going to turn my brush to the side, almost like a knife. And I'm going to feather that bulk product back into the nail bed. And you just feather it back, back lightly, just to make sure there's some random bits of glitter through the nail bed. You are leaving the bulk of the glitter on the tip. And then I usually show the client and if they're happy with the amount of glitter, they can pop it into the light and cure it for 30 seconds to lock it into place. And again, while their first hand is in the light curing, we're working on the second hand. So we're always doing something. We don't, don't really ever stop. And as I'm working, I do chat to my clients. I know everything about my clients. We have a great conversation. Uh, you just have to learn to talk to the hand. Just don't look up as much as you would, which is hard for some nail techs to grasp. If you're used to making thorough eye contact with everybody you speak to it can be a little bit hard but clients understand that you're there to do your job and honestly these days people don't have an hour and a half or two hours to sit and get their nails done they want in and out on their lunch break or they finished a hard day at work they want to quickly get their nails done so they can go home and relax All right, so once the second hand is done, just gone off camera a little bit there, just doing the thumb, <clears throat> that second hand will go into the lamp and cure for 30 seconds. If you're using a UV lamp, all of these curing times are two minutes. Now we are into the top coat application. I'm using Light Elegance Super Shiny, which is a non-porous hard gel top coat that is super shiny, hence the name awesome product it's quite a thick um, it's a, it's actually a hard gel in a bottle so it is quite thick uh, you can fill in any ridges you're not actually going to be able to feel the grains of glitter which is really nice with some thinner top coats if you were to do this you would need to top coat twice um, so you didn't feel that glitter but super shiny encases it really well and you'll get a really nice smooth finish now this cures for 60 seconds all of the other products that we've seen are 30 seconds this is 60 seconds in LED for the ultimate shine. When you apply it, just make sure you are floating it more than brushing it. You're going from the cuticle to the free edge. Once you reach the free edge, you're just really lightly capping that free edge. And once we finish that, this is about the only time that I find I do have to wait for a few seconds during my service. And that is because that first hand needs the whole 60 seconds to cure. Doesn't take me quite 60 seconds to top coat the second hand. So I do usually have 20 or 30 seconds delay um, while the first hand is in the lamp. So I just use that time to clean up my workstation, to pack everything away um, and keep everything neat and tidy and organized. Once that hand comes out of the lamp, I then use the Light Elegance Cleanser just to remove the inhibition layer. And then we can apply our Light Elegance Cuticle Oil. I like the big dropper bottles because uh, it's nice and hygienic. There's no brush or dropper to contaminate the oil that's already, that's still in the bottle. Um, we can just drip it onto the nail without ever touching it. It's got some super amazing ingredients. Okay, once we've done that, there is a little wait again for the second hand just to clock over that 60 seconds. You need the 60 seconds to give it that really high, durable shine. And once that's done again, I cleanse the inhibition layer, apply the cuticle oil, and then I give my clients a hot towel just to wipe the dust and the debris off. I usually put a few drops of essential oil on my towel, so it's a really nice, pleasant way to end their infill. And they're in and out in the lunch break. So this has taken us for all 10 hands, uh, full infill. It's taken us under 25 minutes with no shortcuts taken. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial and I would love for you to, to subscribe to my channel um, and drop your comments below. Thank you.